those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength, and they shall rise up with wings as eagles. They shall. Welcome Rhema, Melbourne Online Church. Hi to everybody from Melbourne, Australia and around the world. Let me encourage you this morning with a promise from God's Word in Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. A great promise from the Word of God. Let me pray and commit our service to the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you for this brand new day. We thank you that we're back in church, fellowshipping with one another, worshipping you. And we thank you for the word of God that's going to come forth in great power today. Father, we thank you that hearts would be touched and lives would be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. All our online programs can be watched on YouTube and Facebook. And what's online this week, we have Eagles Prayer, Thursday night, 7.30pm. Sunday services, 10am. And if you live in Melbourne, you can always join us at Doncaster, 10am, and Mill Park, 6pm. Just a reminder that our services are now held at the Plenty Valley Adventist Church at Centenary Drive, Mill Park. Please like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need prayer or help support, sorry, help or prayer support, contact the church and the contact details should be below on your screen right now. Or you can go to our website, raymafamilychurch.org.au. You can message church on Rayma 0410 If you've got a testimony, please let us know. We want to know what God's doing around you, in you, through you. We always want to hear great testimonies. We appreciate all your continued support for Rayma ministry. So have an awesome day. Enjoy the service this morning and have a blessed week. Till next time, bye now. Good morning, Rhema family. It's tithes and offerings time. Now you can give at the bank via cash, you can give via direct deposit, the Tithely app, or via check. Our giving details um, are online or on your screen below. I want to read from Hebrews 13 verse 16 today, and it says, Do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. We want to be pleasing to God, don't we? Also, faith pleases God, doesn't it? And our vision here at Rhema is to teach, equip and train people in a lifestyle of faith that's pleasing to God. Giving our tithes and offerings is walking by faith because as we sow our seed, we're trusting him to multiply that and for us to reap a harvest and for him to provide it for our needs. So by us sharing, doing good and giving our tithes and offerings, we're all pleasing to God, which is a good aim to have. So keep that in mind as you give today. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity for us to once again tithe and give offerings into your kingdom. We give cheerfully today and expectantly, and we thank you that the seed that we're sowing will reap an abundant harvest, harvest of souls, um, sow into the lives of people, and we also thank you that you provide us, provide our needs and that our cup overflows so we have even more to give back into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week, everyone. Bye. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Raymond Melbourne Online Church. Well, I'm really looking forward to teaching part two of Times of the End. We started past part one last week. You can go back and you can check that um, last week's teaching. So what we're going to do, we're going to pray. We're going to commit this time to the Lord. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to teaching this lesson today. You know, Russia is at war 
with Ukraine. We've seen so many things happening around the world, uh, COVID, rain bombs, floods, earthquakes. In fact, there was a big earthquake in Japan only this week. And so we're seeing all these different events taking and happening around the world, all these different weather patterns. So, you know, what's happening? What is going on? Uh, what about Russia? What about this war? Where do Russia fit into these times uh, of, of war? You know, what's their place, Russia's place in history? So we're going to get through and have a look at many of these things. So let's pray. Let's commit it to the Lord. Father God, we rejoice in you. We rejoice in your word. We thank you that your word is truth and that the truth makes us free. We thank you about truth pertaining to these last days, these end of times. And so, Father God, we commit this time to you. We pray for wisdom. I pray for eyes of understanding to be enlightened and open for the people that hear this, Father God, that we will know and understand the signs of the times. I pray for utterance to be given to myself, to open my mouth boldly and accurately as we dig into this teaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. And so times of the end. So I'm going to start this with Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. This is our foundational scripture. Uh, times of the end. And uh, Daniel shared this. And this is about the times that we live in now, the last days. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end, the times of the end. So the times of the end that Daniel is talking about was sealed up for a period of time. It was hid in times past. These days that we're living right now, no one knew about the church age. No one knew about the mystery. It was, it was hid in the heart of God. It was sealed these last days, even to the time of the end. Uh, and then in the last days, many will run to and fro. So travel will uh, really be liberated. We'll be able to travel around the world really quickly. This is what he's prophesying, which we see coming to pass today. We live in these last days and we know that we can just jump on an aeroplane and we can travel so quickly to any part of the world. I remember traveling to the USA to see Brother Hagen uh, teach before it, just before he moved to heaven, teaching about uh, the Holy Spirit and, uh, 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 and, and, and a great anointing upon that he didn't want the Holy Spirit to be lost to our generation. So I traveled over there with Pastor Eileen to the USA, see Brother Hagen, do some conferences on the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow, I tell you, it was, it was dynamic, powerful, and it was a great time. And so travel... Uh, but not only that, it's talking about and knowledge will increase as well. And so we know that revelation has really increased. It's increased since, since the church age began, which was on the day of Pentecost. And knowledge has been increasing and increasing. And then we know that through the internet, through social media, uh, through podcasts and things as such, you know, knowledge is really, really expanded. You can just dig into your iPhone and you can listen to anything, any teachings today. And so knowledge is really increased. And so we know that the seal is open. We know that today uh, that knowledge is really increasing. In fact, I like reading that in the Amplified Bible too. He said, but you, Daniel, you shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end, then many shall run to and fro and search anxiously uh, and knowledge for knowledge of God's word, uh, for God's word and God's purposes as revealed by his prophets. And it shall be increased and become great. 
So the book was sealed until a specific time. And so that's what a seal is. There is an appointed time for its fulfillment. Just like there's an appointed time, we said last week, for the seal. Um, on the book of Revelation, chapter 6, and starting from verse 2, uh, where it, it begins to open a seal for the tribulation. We know today we're not in the tribulation, so that seal is not yet opened. So there are, are appointed times, there are moeds, there are appointed times for fulfillment. And we are in an appointed time that Daniel here, he's speaking about the book was sealed until the last days. Well, we saw last week that the seal has been opened uh, for the last days. In Joel 2, 28, 29, it was prophet, prophesied, it will come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and men will dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and also upon your servants uh, and upon your uh, handmaids in those days I will pour out of my spirit. So the Spirit of God was poured out on the day of Pentecost. That was confirmed in Acts chapter 2. And we read that and we had a look at that last week. And so if we go to um, uh, Ephesians, let's just read that again. Ephesians chapter 3, how things have been sealed or hid. So these times that we're living in today, this was hid in past times, they did not know about this dispensation, the dispensation of grace, the dispensation of the mystery. They did not know about these last days uh, that, that was uh, hid and that he was speaking about Daniel in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, uh, these last days. And so in Ephesians chapter 3, and verse 1, for this cause I, Paul, a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. So this is the Gentile age. The Gentile age started on the day of Pentecost. Before the day of Pentecost, it was called the Jewish age. God was dealing with the Jews in Jerusalem. From the day of Pentecost that was prophesied by the prophet Joel and was came to fulfillment in Acts chapter 2 when God poured out his spirit and people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. People began, began to speak in other tongues. That fulfillment of the Jewish age. God moved from the Jewish age into the Gentile age. But God still has not yet finished with the Jews. The tribulation God goes back to deal with the Jews in the tribulation. But the last days, the church, the mystery, uh, this is a time of the Gentiles, the Gentile age, uh, where, where the gospel came out of Jerusalem and the Jews were scattered around the world. The gospel uh, that was translated into a world language that could be understood of the Greek language was spread out throughout the, the world uh, so that uh, people could understand uh, about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as the gospel came out of uh, Jerusalem into the Gentiles. So we are living in this Gentile age. And he said, how that by revelation, Paul said, he made known unto me the mystery. So what is the mystery? Is the mystery something that you're not supposed to know about, that it's hidden and you're not supposed to know? No, that's not what the mystery is all about. The mystery is about the church, the church age, the body of Christ. Hallelujah. The dispensation of grace. The last days. That's what it's all about. These last days. Hallelujah. The times of the end. And so he said, this is the mystery whereby you may read and understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages. Now, other ages is dispensations. And that's what we're going to touch on today. 
uh, a little bit more about dispensations. So time has been broken up into different dispensations and there are seven dispensations of, of man. Uh, so which in other dispensations or ages was not made known. So this mystery in times past was not made known to the people in the Old Testament. But it is now revealed, the last days. Remember, it was sealed up. The book was sealed, the last days. But now it's been revealed. Now that seal is open, and it opened on the day of Pentecost. And it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. So uh, we, the branches, we've come into the vine. Hallelujah. Uh, we are a part of the plans and the purposes of God. So uh, in, in uh, Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10, it reads about, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times and what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do as I please. And so prophecy from the beginning to the end, it will come to pass. It will, it shall be fulfilled. Hallelujah. I will do all that I please, the Lord said. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, and uh, it talks about this. Know also that in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous times will come. Wars and rumours of wars, pestilences, and all these events and things, earthquakes that we're seeing around the world at the, at the moment. It means troublesome uh, hard times or troubled times. There'll be troubled times. And so let's go to Hebrews uh, chapter 1. And this is where we got to last week. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. And so we come to uh, a point in time which is dispensation. So God is teaching us about dispensations. And so God, verse 1, Hebrews 1 and verse 1, are you there? Are you ready? So Hebrews 1 verse 1, God who at sundry times, that means different times, God who in different times and in different manners or different ways, different times, different ways, spoke in times past, uh, through the fathers by the prophets. So he spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets. And then in verse 2, Ben has in these last days, the last days, again, there's that word. So these are the last days that we are living in right now, studied on the day of Pentecost. In these last days, spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir over all things by whom he made the world. Jesus was a part of that creation. He created the whole world. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. So we see here, as we begin to look at this, this is teaching us about dispensations. And so God didn't just communicate with man with just one blob of time or one dispensation. How God has dealt with man, how God has approached man has been different in every dispensation. Now, if we don't understand or know dispensations, we will really mess up our end time teaching. Uh, we won't understand these last days. We won't understand what's happening with Russia and the times and the seasons and, and about other wars that the Bible has actually prophesied. So the Bible has prophesied about wars and certain 
particular wars, okay? And so dispensations, it's so important we understand uh, how time has been broken up and what God has done in each dispensation. Remember the, the dispensation of grace that we live in today, that was hid in times past, but now it's been revealed. The, seals, the seal has been opened and we can understand uh, the sign of the times. Knowledge is increasing. Travel's increasing. Knowledge is increasing through the internet, through social media. And so this is a whole new, different time that we are in. So, so in the dispensation that we live in, this is the sixth sixth dispensation and it's called the dispensation of the church the church age the body of christ the mystery the last days the end of days uh, that daniel was talking about and so here we see that god has spoke in many ways different ways there's there's many parts that God has spoken to us, different ways, different parts, many parts, and in pieces of time. He spoke through prophets, priests, and kings, and today, through the, the dispensation of the church, he's speaking directly through the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it awesome that we have a hotline from the Lord, from heaven, a hotline uh, moving through us, through our spirit, as the Holy Spirit speaks to us, as the Lord speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the dispensation that we live in today. What a privileged time we are living in. Hallelujah. And so that word uh, dispensation is literally an administration. And I shared with you that a good example of dispensation or that word administration is just like a president or a prime minister when they come into office, when they're voted in, that they bring an administration uh, in how uh, they will approach the nation and what they will do in that nation through their time of office, through their administration. And then when they move out of office and another prime minister or president comes into office, then they move into a different administration. And that's what God has done through time. Uh, God has operated. He's broken it up into different parts, different parts at different times, how he approaches man and what he does with man. So seven dispensations of man. The first dispensation is the dispensation of innocence. And the dispensation of innocence um, uh, that ended, that ends in judgment. Of course, the, the dispensation of innocence is Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God creates man. God can approach man. Uh, nothing's, you know, there's no hindrance between God and man. Adam is walking and talking in the Garden of Eden with his father. How awesome that is. But then uh, Satan comes and brings deception and lies and tricks them. Man falls into sin. And sin is a separation between man and God. And so Sin brought a separation, so how God approached man uh, would have to be different. So man moved into a second dispensation, and that's the dispensation of uh, conscience. And that's where, you know, there were no written laws under this dispensation of conscience. You know, they, they just operated and moved according to their own conscience of how they felt. So God, uh, so uh, it's so called because man was tested to see if he would obey his own conscience regarding right or wrong. Conscience. And then that ended in the flood, the tower, uh, that, that ended in the, in, in, sorry, that ended in judgment in the flood. And then it went to human government. That's the third dispensation, human government. 
That means human laws regulated man's life. So they've gone from their own conscious conscience now to human laws that regulates man's life as self-government. And, then, and how God approached man in all these dispensations again is different. But in each dispensation, God has always um, approached man in faith and man has always had to approach God in faith or by faith. Hallelujah. Faith has always been. It's God's way. It's not possible to please God without faith. In the Old Testament, in every dispensation, man had to live and walk by faith and trust in God, just as we do today. And then the fourth dispensation is the dispensation of promise. Uh, because God promised the seed. The seed, the line that would come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The seed that would come uh, through to our Lord Jesus Christ. The seed from Abraham through to our Lord Jesus Christ. The promise of the seed. And then that ends up in bondage in Egypt. So that dispensation ends in bondage in Egypt. And then they went into the fifth dispensation, which is the dispensation of law. And so the dispensation of law, um, uh, that, that's the dispensation just before the dispensation that we live in now. Uh, and this dispensation that ends in sin at the cross of Calvary. And from the cross of Calvary, we came into the, the sixth dispensation, which is the dispensation that we've been looking and talking about, which is the dispensation of the church, of grace, of the mystery, of the last days, these last days, the end of days. And so uh, the law from Egypt, to the cross. And so, you know, you've got to realize that in under this dispensation, everything was revealed too through types and shadows. They didn't have a Bible. They didn't have the knowledge and the revelation that we have today. They couldn't carry a King James Bible or a Passion Bible. Everything was taught in pictures and in types, types of so they would have a type of an animal sacrifice. You know, what was the purpose of the law? The law was always about, about pointing to Jesus. It always said that uh, the, because man could not keep the law. Man could not keep the law. Animal sacrifices always pointed to the cross. The one day uh, the Messiah will come. The Lord Jesus will come. Uh, the Messiah will come and he will remove the sins of the world. And this is a type of, this animal is a type of Jesus that will come. So knowledge and information and how they were taught was not just through direct revelation, but it was through all these different types and, and shadows. But we have the real thing today. Glory be to God. Not just the shadow, but the real thing. And, and, and not just types. And so they needed a saviour. And so the purpose of the law was to show them that they felt short. Man always falls short of God's, of God's 100% um, uh, perfection. And so the law was there. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. This is God's expectation. But man kept falling short of that. And, you know, in every dispensation that we've looked at so far, you know, God starts the dispensation. It ends uh, because man always falls short. God starts a new one, just like when Adam fell short in the Garden of Eden. So God starts a new one. Man falls short, God starts a new one. And the same thing under the law. Um, you know, man cannot keep the law. He cannot live by the law. The purpose of the law was always to reveal that we could not keep the law. We could not live by the law of our need for a saviour and a redeemer to come. 
And so dispensations are really, really important to understand as we get into a lot of this end time uh, uh, teaching, these end times of the end, for us to really understand. And so the law. And then the law finished at the cross. In fact, it literally finished when Jesus rode into uh, Bethlehem, into Jerusalem on a donkey, Palm Sunday. And, and everyone was shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, you know, here comes the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. When everyone was crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, uh, God finished dealing, you know, the law finished. And, and the church age began. God, when he rode into Jerusalem on that donkey, Jewish age stopped. Just short of the cross. Jewish age, age stopped. How God was dealing with the Jews in Jerusalem. It stopped, it finished. And God started a whole new period, a whole new dispensation. The sixth dispensation called the church, the mystery that we read about in Ephesians, that the apostle Paul spoke about, that it was hid in times and is now revealed. So Old Testament saints didn't understand or know this period of time. In the Gospels, it was hid. They did not know in the Gospels about the church. The church began on the day of Pentecost. The last days began on the day of Pentecost. Uh, they started on the day of Pentecost and um, the last days and they will end or finish at the end of the tribulation. And so these are the last days. Hallelujah. So uh, as we get into this now, we begin to see this uh, sixth dispensation, the church age, the mystery. Hallelujah. And of course, that will end at the finish or close at the end of the tribulation, or it will close or end in the wine press of God's wrath, which is the Battle of Armageddon. So, this time period, the dispensation of grace started on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, and will end at the wine press uh, at the end of the tribulation. And so understanding the church age, the tribulation, the Old Testament, knowledge, how it's been opened, how the seals have been opened, it's important for us to understand and to know. Hallelujah. You know, Daniel 70 weeks. Uh, Daniel 70 weeks. I don't know whether you've ever heard about them before, but that all started. Daniel 70 weeks, uh, that, that began... Daniel got a revelation. Uh, the children of Israel were in Babylonian captivity. And Daniel was fasting and praying and seeking God and saying, how long are we going to be in captivity? When are we going to get out of captivity? And God gave him a revelation. He gave him a revelation of 70 weeks. 70 weeks. And Daniel 70 weeks is broken up into this time that I'm going to share with you now. There are 70 weeks that by revelation that have been cut out of time that was given to Daniel for us to know and to understand, to fit into end time prophecy so that we can understand the times and the seasons and the signs of the times that we are living in today, 70 weeks. And so God gave him this revelation. He said from, because when Babylonian, uh, the Babylonians came in, they plundered Jerusalem and uh, they plundered Israel. Uh, they destroyed the temple and they went into captivity. So God said, when you come out of captivity, there'll be a time where you will start the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. And from the start of that command, when that begins, that time, you come out of captivity, you will start building, rebuilding the temple until it's 
completion from the beginning to the end will be seven weeks. And then from when it's completed to the cross, the end of Jewish age will be 62 weeks. And so 62 plus 7 is 69 weeks. So Daniel was given 70 weeks. And so at the end of Jewish age, from, from Daniel's first week up to 69 weeks, God dealing with the Jews in Jerusalem, it finished at that time. And God started a whole new dispensation, this sixth dispensation called the church, called the church age. And the church age is in between Daniel's 69th week and 70th week. And so when our dispensation finishes, the dispensation of grace, the Gentile age, God dealing with the Gentiles as the gospel, uh, as the Jews were scattered around the world. And then they've been going since 1948. Uh, Israel, uh, uh, the Jews have been going back to Israel and Israel was established as a nation uh, in 1948, and since that time, all the Jews have been going back there. And, and that will be getting ready for Daniel's 70th week, when God will go back and deal with the Jews. So Daniel's 70 weeks is starting the temple to the completion, and then up to the cross is 69 weeks. And then we enter into a dispensation called the church, the age of the Gentiles, the Gentile age. And that will end and finish the Gentile age at the rapture of the church. So at the rapture of the church, Gentile times will age. Gentile age will end at the rapture of the church. And so the rapture is a part of our age. It's a part of our dispensation. And then when at the rapture, the earth goes into the tribulation and Jewish age or Daniel's 70th week. And so the tribulation is actually called Daniel's 70th week, where God is dealing with the Jews in Jerusalem. And so these are all the different dispensations. Dispensation of the law is the fifth one. Sixth one is the Jewish age. And then the last one, when that ends at the wine press, the battle of Armageddon, uh, we go into uh, the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ, where there will be peace for a thousand years on the earth. And Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords and sets up uh, divine government not just human government and these governments of conscience and human government and law and grace and all this human government, uh, Jesus will come and set up divine government and divine government will be the millennial reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. So 1,000 years, uh, we will have the millennium and that will end in Judgment, the final judgment of the great white throne judgment. And then from there, we go into eternities upon eternities. Hallelujah. It called, and that's called the final one after the millennium, after the judgment seat of Christ and everything's sealed, everything's finished. It's all done and dusted. We've got to the end of all the dispensations we come into the eternities upon eternities, the, the eternal state, it's called. And so that's where we, we, we move then into Matthew uh, chapter 24 and where we can start looking at the last days and the times that we're living in right now. So one thing I want to start with is letting you understand to rightly divide the word of God. You know, Matthew's 23, 24, uh, Matthew chapter 25, they are 
definitely all in chronological order. So there is a, a progression that Jesus is going through. He goes into the temple, has the temple discourse and calls the Pharisees exactly what they are. And then um, in Matthew chapter 24, he begins to talk uh, to the, the, the disciples. And in verse 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples come to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said, so they were impressed. They said, look at this magnificent temple, Jesus. Look how magnificent it is. Isn't it awesome? And Jesus is looking into the future. They're looking directly at that temple, but Jesus is looking at it and looking into the future. And Jesus said, see you not that all these things that I'm telling to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another. And it shall not, that will not be uh, thrown down. In other words, this temple that you're looking at is going to be destroyed. And that literally occurred um, in AD when the Roman Empire came through in 70 AD. So in 70 AD, the Roman Empire, they came through and they plundered and destroyed that temple. Jesus is speaking about the future. He's telling them literally what's going to happen. And in verse 38 of chapter 23, we read, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Uh, for I say to you, you shall not see me till you, sh you will say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So he's beginning to prophesy about the end of the dispensation of the Jews, the Jewish age, the end of the 69 weeks. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And then Jesus went out and departed. And in verse 2, uh, Jesus said to them, See, not all these buildings. I'm telling you that it will be destroyed. And verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? And what will be a sign of the end of the world? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we're going to take that up next week and finish that and uh, look, begin to look and see uh, about these last days and about these last times, these times that were sealed by Daniel, but is now revealed, it's now been opened and knowledge is increasing so we can have a, a great revelation and understanding about exactly what is going on, what's happening with this uh, war where Russia has uh, started war with the Ukraine. What other wars will happen uh, according to the Bible? And so uh, Jesus begins to answer their questions over the next two chapters. Okay, so glory be to God. I pray that you've enjoyed that. I've been enjoying teaching this. And I'm really looking forward to getting into next week's lesson. So if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, then, you know, if you don't know Christ as your Lord, you need to be saved. These are perilous times, troubled times. For us, we're not troubled because we have peace in our Lord Jesus Christ. We understand and know we have knowledge. But for people that are not Christians, people that have not received Christ, people that don't understand what's going on, they need to receive Christ as their Lord and Saviour and receive revelation about these times. You can receive Christ as your Saviour now. You can do that simply. It's not complicated. It's not deep. It's so simple. All you need to do is ask. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. And so just ask now. Say, Lord Jesus, Say these words after me. Repeat these words now. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I ask for you to be my Lord and Saviour. You said in your word, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you're the Christ, the Son of God, then I shall be saved. So I believe with all my heart that I receive Christ and I believe with all my heart that I'm saved now. So if you've done that, you've come from death to life. You are now a child of God. And we've got information and things to send you. Make sure you continue to listen to this uh, teaching and teachings that we have online. For you that live in Melbourne, come and visit us in Doncaster. We've got awesome churches in Doncaster and Mill Park. Doncaster is at 10 o'clock in Melbourne and then Mill Park at 6 p.m. So you are blessed. You have an awesome week. Uh, remember that Jesus is Lord. So you have a, a great, awesome week. God bless. And those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew.